Hello, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Mailbag Monday. We're angels. I'll take time and answer questions that you've sent in. We've got a ton of them. But before we get started today, people ask where our information comes from. Well, we started a publish company a few years ago. One of the books we published is real good. God knows how to raise your kids if you don't. It's not a funny title. It's a great title. We got a ton of scripture on parenting, what God had to say about it. He said a lot. So if you need this, call us, get a copy of it. It'll help you out a lot. So Angel, let's jump in. All right. Uh, we sent our somewhat normal child to college this past fall. Uh oh. We are already seeing signs that he is being affected by the secular atmosphere. Yes. Did either of you see your kids change after attending college? And is there a way to combat the effects afterwards? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. I sent both my kids to a Christian university. If I could change that, I would. Now, they wouldn't probably like to hear that because my daughter went on and got her master's and everything. But <clears throat> yes, it definitely affected their hearts and their opinions became way more liberal. And I have had to learn to keep my mouth shut a little bit. Not yeah, really. <laughs> I'm sorry. Really? Really? <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> yes, I have. Now, uh, it has gotten better. It's taken time. I had to have a couple come to Jesus meetings with them. Oh, you've done great. If I, ever great. Say, if I ever say to my children, I need you both to call me at the same time, they know. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I had to have a couple, especially... When COVID happened, uh, it, they got, they drank the Kool-Aid pretty hard on that one. And so, uh, it, uh, it got interesting there for a little bit, but, uh, so yes, it has, it's been a slow process because now my son is 30 and it's been a few years and it's still, it's still moving, but it's definitely it's going the right direction, but it's a slow process, it's a slow moving boat, but it's going the right direction. Uh, we all sent our kids to Christian universities, uh, uh, great universities. Uh, three of mine went to the university in Tulsa. Two of mine went to the university in Tennessee. One went to a very private university in, in uh, Nashville. And, uh, but Christian doesn't necessarily mean Christian. All professors there aren't necessarily Christian and they don't necessarily believe whatever you theologically believe yourself. And so the, the advantage I had was my first two. Uh, we lived close up to campus. They lived at home during their time of four years college. And that helped a lot because we'd still get weird stuff to come dead today. The professor shared this, the professor shared this. I said, are they Christian? I thought a Christian university hired Christian professors, not necessarily. And just because they're Christian, they don't, they won't, don't agree with your theology. So it's good for your kids to be exposed and learn. It's a big world. Most people on this planet do not believe like you, nor will they ever believe like you, nor do they think like you or vote like you. You're on an alien planet. This world is not our home, but we are passing through. We're supposed to be the light and the salt and the blessed, leave everybody better than we find them. So that's part of the education process. You're on an alien planet. Satan is the temporary God of this world. He steals, kills, and destroys. God's not allowed in here unless somebody invites him. That's called prayer. If you don't pray, God can't get involved in your life. And so... It's really good from the experience. So I'm like angel. If I had to do it over again, I probably would do it different, but I'm very thankful for the experience they got. They learned a lot. And one of the biggest things I would have done different, I probably would have talked to them and prepped them more to be prepared for that. Well, we didn't know. We didn't expect it. No, because I went to the same school and I had a totally different experience. Yes, it changed. But at that time, when I went back Many moons ago, it was it was just a Bible college, and now yes. it's a major university. Yes. So uh, things change. Yeah, things have changed. So but, yeah, so uh, you cannot uh, cannot hibernate with your kids. They're in the world, but they're not of the world. Many of the Jewish parents in Jesus's day. Uh, many of the history books recorded, they went to secular schools. Many of the new Christians that just got born again in spirit filled after Jesus left this planet and his apostles took over and the gospel was spreading like wildfire, 5,000 saved one day at 8,000 other. Many of those 
Christian parents sent their kids to Roman schools where they learned about Roman religion and Roman gods. And if you read some of the history books, they'd come home and which learned they learned about this. But what they said was many of the conversation and many of the recordings or the, or the writings that we've got, they would say, well, mom, we know that's not true. We, we learned this. We made an A on the test, but we know that's not true. There are no gods. There's only one God. You know, there's just one Jesus, one Holy Spirit. So they knew the truth so well. They knew the lie. I tell the story all the time. FBI agents, we were taking a tour of Washington, D.C. one time with the kids. We were, t- we were touring the U.S. Mint where they make money. Big old building, big brick building. And so they were printing $20 bills that day. We're like two floors up, big windows. We're looking down on the floor where they're printing the tw- pallets and pallets of $20 bills. And so as we're leaving the tour that day, about a two-hour tour, we go by one floor where we say, well, here's where the FBI agents who specialize in counterfeit money train. They train here for six weeks, becoming experts on counterfeits. But in that six weeks, not one time do they ever see a counterfeit bill. All they study are good bills, but their expertise is counterfeit. Well, how do you know a counterfeit bill when you know it? Well, because we know the good so good we know the bad when we see it because we know it's not good. People spend too much time studying the bad, studying the wrong thing. If you know the good, I don't know what's good. What is that? That's bad. Do you believe it? No, but I'm making A on the test. So I give them what they want. I told my kids, give them what they're asking for. You can make an A. Do you believe it? I don't have to believe it. We took the SAT, uh, AC and SAT test. I started giving it every year. I had my kids take it four times a year in the ninth grade, four times a year in the tenth grade. I wanted to make a high score on the test because you get scholarship money based on the high score. So we practiced that test. And my kids, Dad, we don't believe this. No, but that's what they want. Give them what they want. We're trying to get a high score. So, Oh, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And we got scholarships for all of them. So it turned out good. And I'm talking too much. You're a little wordy, but that's okay. <laughs> Still love you. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. Uh, Joe, my wife and I don't ride in the car together very much, usually some on the weekends. She says she hates the way I drive, but I also never get into accidents. I admit I'm impatient when the lights turn green. Nothing irritates me more than someone sitting at a green light looking at their phone. Oh, you're the guy that honks behind me all the time. I also drive like I shop fast. Yeah, we love you, brother. We love you. Um, I drive most of the time because Joe is like chicka poka chicka poka chicka poka chicka poka chicka poka. My son is a driver like that too. And I have to drive with him too. I'm driving on the right side and I'm not passing anybody. I don't need to pass anybody. But and, I but I could get to the restaurant thirty minutes before. Angel's like the Indy five hundred. She's never had an accident. She's an incredibly good driver. But most of the time when I'm riding with Angel, I look out the passenger window. I can't look out for No, he does this. If I'm looking out front, I am moving, I'm grabbing the dashboard. Cause but she's a great driver, but it's not the Indy 500. Well, here's the thing is I have an, a little bit of an obsession. I don't like to be late to nope. anything. I think it's very rude to make people wait for you. So I'm always early. As a matter of fact, I have friends that will say to me, I'm going to try to beat you to the restaurant this time. Nobody does. Nobody does. Not unless they really get there. Like- We're there a minimum, a minimum 30 minutes early. Everywhere we go. We're a minimum 30 minutes early. Y'all here? Yeah. Well, but you certainly weren't that way before we married. No. You were late everywhere. Yes. I was very relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> so opposites attract. And so just. Uh, I think it's fine to drive separately. My former husband and I <laughs> always drove separately because he would make me car sick. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. And he was very. uh Distracted driver. He was not a good driver. He was not a good driver. So I always drove, even if we were going to the same place, we worked at the same church. I would drive separately. Great preacher, not a good driver. Yeah. We all have strengths and weaknesses. So yeah, just stay in your own car and stay relaxed. Joe, I heard you talk about marrying someone with your strengths and weaknesses being opposite of each other. Whoa. Are there times when people's weaknesses are the same? So much that marriage is not a good idea. Perhaps someone has issues in an area and the other person's issues will always be salt in the wound. Well, I'll let you jump in on that. Well, I mean, just what we're talking about. Like I, I, I am a little bit obsessive about being on time early 
everywhere. And so that isn't Joe's natural strength. And no, it's not a strength at all. As a matter of fact, when my kids were growing up, I would start heading to the car and I'd say, I'm on my way to the car. They'd grab their shoes and start running as fast as they could because they knew if I get in that car and get my seatbelt on and you're not in here, I'm leaving you. We've had friends come to stay with us for two or three days at a time. Many times I've gone into the kitchen and they're standing there. Where's Angel? Oh, she's outside in the car. She's outside. Oh, yeah. She goes early. <laughs> it's outside. It's running. She's waiting on us. Well, she didn't say anything. She doesn't. She just leaves. And so you got to keep your own angel. Is she headed for the door? That means get in behind because she's leaving and she doesn't tell you anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I so, probably am leading to bring that in just a little bit. But it is difficult when both parties, like if you've seen a couple where like one is a hoarder yeah. and then the other one, they tend to attract each other. Oh, yeah. And it's like, I'm the opposite. I'm a purger. I will. I have no, no attachments. Things are not my thing. There's nothing in our attic, nothing in storage in our house right now. No, I just think, okay, I haven't used it out. And my kids, it would drive them nuts. They'd come home and their toys would be given away yep. and stuff. And they'd be like, Whoa. but you know, that's so, so, but it, it does sometimes happen where you both have the same weaknesses. Yeah. But you're going to have to learn how to amend it. Yeah. So uh, that's why they have classes and courses and books and uh, seminars on the weekend. Change behavior yes, you can. If you want yes, to. Yes, you can. You can get better. You might not win an award or be a gold star, but you can get better. And so, but you got to make a decision to get better. Well, and for example, I had a very hot temper when I was young. Yeah. And I, I never lose my temper. And if I do, I just get real quiet now. But that wasn't how always how I handled it. I don't yell or scream. But if I get real quiet, that usually means I need some space right now. <laughs> now, five years of marriage. Angel, I've been married five years. And five years, married, Angel has never raised her voice. Never threatened, never yelled, mm-hmm. never, never used bad language. She just gets real calm. But four times in our five years of marriage, she's done this. That means, Joe, I need some space. Go to your office. <laughs> and I said, yes, ma'am, I'll be in my office when you need me. And every time you spend 30 minutes, she'll come and she'll repent. So I'm sorry. No, babe, you're fine. Come and give me a hug. And so she's real good. She's learned to control that stuff. So you can change behavior. Yes, you can. And change. I was raised in a family that was a lot oh. of arguments and fighting. And I didn't want that for my family. I wanted peace. And I determined to change that. And I have. Yes, it was a decision. Yep. So it can be done. It can be done. But you can't wait on your spouse to change. Nope. you got to decide to change yourself, whether they ever change or not. Right. That's a revelation. <laughs> we love you guys so much. Thanks for joining us. And join us again next Monday for our Bail Bag Mondays. God bless, guys. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. It's got a great future for you and your family. And we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.